can you shoot? chance I might launch into reciting the cremation of Sam McGee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. <laughs> start in Geneva. I think we were, as I said last night, building on American strength and allied unity, and we, in our restored military and economic uh, situation, and uh, while we went there with a sense of realism, I don't think any of us expected to see that there were going to be any fundamental changes in Soviet philosophy, uh, and there weren't. But I thought that if we could start out and clear up some uh, misunderstandings, narrow differences, and in the first meeting, uh, we were the hosts, and we had called for 15 minutes that he and I would have together before we went into the plenary meeting, and the 15 minutes turned into an hour. But I had an opportunity to tell him, and I thought that I had some, that he accepted this and uh, wanted to proceed and uh, on that same a wavelength, and that was where I said that I didn't think we could ever get things done like arms control or anything else unless we set out to eliminate the mistrust and the suspicions that existed between our peoples. To go into an arms negotiation, uh, uh, if both sides are still suspicious, then you know that both sides are still trying to s protect any advantage they can. If you can really eliminate the suspicions, you both went to the meeting seeing no particular need for maintaining uh, this great military strength. And as I say, I think he accepted that. We had a real dialogue. We had to go on for an hour. It was only supposed to be there 15 minutes. Out of the 15 minutes, uh, the timekeepers here have suggested that five, or the 15 hours, I should say, of total meetings, that more than five of them were taken up just in one-on-ones between us. And I think a great deal was, was accomplished there. We covered all the topics, arms control, security issues, human rights, uh, regional conflicts, and the bilateral issues, and nothing was papered over. Or did anyone try to pretend that we had done better than we had on some where we just could not quite come together? And so, as I asked last night, where do we go from here? Well. He'll come to Washington next year, and I've accepted his invitation to visit Moscow in 87. Now, we have a lot of work in the meantime. We've cleared the air, and I think we have a sense of the common ground. But one of the first things I told him, and I think we have agreed on, that words are not going to be enough. It will take deeds to eliminate the suspicions the mistrust on each other's part. But I know his closing words to me when we parted were that we didn't just say goodbye and then meet together again sometime next year here in the United States. And I got his plea then to that we keep in touch and we keep in contact on issues uh, in the interim. So I, I have to believe that there, at least, they share, share with us in the desire to get something done and to get things straightened out. And if so, that is a plus that we haven't had in, in previous meetings. But now, 
There's a lot still to be done. And I think I shall call on George here for a report to uh, all of you. But, uh, Really? Mr. President, yeah. Gorbachev said yesterday that uh, if the U.S. goes ahead with SDI, that the Soviets will respond and all restraint will be blown to the wind. Well, we discussed that very thoroughly, and whether they do, I told him that I hoped they would respond by going forward with their own research. But I felt that we should come to an agreement that whichever one of us, or if both of us, could come up with a defensive system, then let's share it so we can get rid of the nuclear weapon. But he was talking about okay, another arms race, sir. Did you see any, let me just, did you see any softening at all? Exactly. None of that issue, no. Okay, thanks, Mr. President. You've had a good session. Thank you. Yeah. 